Welcome to McC Thomas McCain High School. My name is Brian Maddox, principal. I'm honored to be joined this morning by, with an amazing group. Uh, we have the four other high school principals from Red Clay and our supervisor, director of secondary schools, Mr. Sam Golder. To my left, Mr. Mark Pruitt from the Conrad Schools of Science and Ms. Julie T Rumschlag from Cab Calloway School of the Arts. Mr. Golder, our director. Across from Mr. Golder is Mr. Kevin Paldinetti from Alexis I. DuPont High School, and Mr. Byron Murphy from John Dickinson High School. This week, we are celebrating National School Counselor Week across the nation. This morning, we want to take a few minutes to recognize and thank the outstanding individuals that work as counselors in each of our buildings. So let's begin by taking turns introducing our counseling teams, identifying um, their caseloads that they manage for our buildings. Mark, who makes up the counseling team at Conrad? We have three school counselors at Conrad Schools of Science. Two work in the high school. Uh, Ms. Deborah Nolan uh, works with students grades 9 through 12, uh, last names M through Z. Uh, she's also the head of the department. Mr. Uh, Matt Brainerd works with high school students, uh, last names grades A through L in the high school. And our middle school uh, counselor is Ms. Brenda Aiken. She works with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in preparation for high school, college, and careers. Very good. Julia, how about at CAP? So at CAP Calais, we also have three counselors, very similar to what Mr. Pruitt does. We have a middle school counselor, Dale McKenzie, and she works with all students in grades six, seven, and eight. Um, we have Kimberly Rigby, who works with half of our high school team, um, usually mostly A through L. And then Angela Jones does the other half of our high school, and that's M through Z. Very good. Kevin, how about at AI? So we're fortunate at AI High School to have four guidance counselors. Ms. Laura Fitzgerald is our guidance department chair, uh, followed by Ms. Terrence Smith, uh, Mr. Clarence Jarrett, and Mr. Bill Madison, and they serve students in grades 9 through 12. Excellent. Byron, how about at Dickinson? We also have four counselors at Dickinson. Uh, our middle school counselor is uh, John Melodosian. He's also the middle years program coordinator. Uh, we have a ninth grade academy coordinator. Uh, he is Paul LaSorsa. He does all the guidance duties for students in our ninth grade academy. We have two guidance counselors for students in grades 10 through 12. Uh, the first half of the alphabet is Miss Maddie Reitmeyer, and uh, she is also the department chair. And the second part of the alphabet is Miss Suzanne Spitzberg. Excellent. At McCain, we also have four, uh, led by the amazing Amy Leary. Uh, she takes the first part of our alphabet, and the second part of the alphabet goes to Miss Pauline Carroll. And then we have two specialty caseloads. Uh, we have Miss Anna Lombardo, who's out currently on um, maternity leave. Uh, filled in with greatness by uh, Miss Amanda Shores and she leads the population of our ELL students so she specifically we have a, that many students that are English language learners and focuses on that part of our population and then Miss Terry Neal is uh, dynamic and she serves our students with disabilities and 504 plans um, and we we all know that the, the list is endless of the different things that our guidance counselors do for us and for our students and for our buildings. Um, I, I started to uh, copy a list and it went a page and a half long of the different things that they do. It was uh, mind-blowing. Um, what are some of the types of things that our counselors do? Because I, I know the audience out there might not be familiar with high school setting or the types of things that high school counselors do. Uh, and, uh, certainly it's a different role than at, even at the elementary and middle school level. So uh, we can all chime in on this, but what are the different things that uh, our, our counselors do in our building? I'll, I'll jump in here, Brian. I, I have four counselors that, that really do very different things, but as I looked at your list, uh, it, it occurred to me that counselors are really, in all but a couple ways, uh, really a, a part of the administrative team. They help run the building. They help us do everything that we need to do. And really the only differences are they don't do teacher evaluations and, and they, they don't have the same level of accountability for the things that happen. Um, and in my building, um, the department chair, Maddie Reitmeyer, is uh, one of the big tasks that she has is she's our IB diploma program coordinator. And there are a thousand details that have to be taken care of to make sure that our IB program <coughs> Uh, is in compliance with all the requirements from the International Baccalaureate. 
go down to the next person, and she's, uh, she's been given the task of bringing our AVID program up to where we want it to be. And again, these are, these are major leadership roles that, that guidance counselors take and do every day. Mr. LaSorsa runs our ninth grade academy and, and deals with every issue that comes up with our ninth graders, and, uh, and there are lots of them. Uh, and then, really, our, our middle school guidance counselor, uh, in addition to being another IB program coordinator, uh, he really runs the middle school with um, only occasional support from from the administration. So uh, we couldn't. I couldn't do the job. I know. I know my colleagues will say the same. Couldn't do the job without them. They're just uh, incredible workers. Their cars are there first thing in the morning, and they're they're often there when I get my car to go home. Yeah, above and beyond doesn't capture it well enough. That's for sure. I agree. They also serve as a uh, as a bridge for the families and the classroom environment. Uh, students have a concern, families have a concern. It's oftentimes, at least at AI, uh, the counselors that coordinate the parent-teacher conferences, they're making sure the necessary folks are sitting around the table, and it usually occurs after school hours. So we dismiss, students go home, and then the counselors really kind of spring into action, supporting the parents and the students, making sure that whatever the concerns are, are handled in a constructive manner with the teachers and oftentimes working to a resolution right there before the meeting's over. So they, they serve as that very necessary support for the families and the students. I was going to add too, I think another really important aspect is um, the academic rigor that they tend to. So they're in, they're in charge of working with our students on choosing the best courses for them so that they can be prepared for college. That whole college level process and, and counseling for college is really critical. I mean, we have um, our guidance counselors are writing 60 or 70 letters of recommendation mm -hmm. to help our students get into the colleges that fit them the best. Uh, that's a huge, huge component. I would piggyback on what Julie said and say the, the level of uh, guidance counselors have always been had a college component to it. But at this point, I feel like there's really been a shift over the past five years that have made them almost, at least in our building, the two high school counselors, completely college counselors and college preparedness counselors. Starting in ninth grade, they're meeting with students, developing what they call an academic resume that gives them an opportunity to get into college. They have uh, specific things they go through when they meet with each student uh, to make sure that they meet, they're meeting their goals, which were set in the ninth grade. Um, I'm always fascinated that you know we, we have high expectations for our counselors in the building, and you know we I can say hey where are they going to college? Where did they apply? They and they, they can answer those questions. And when you think about the level of detail uh, in my building, they each have about 350 students at the high school level, and you can answer that question. Uh, you know where did they apply? Where did they get admitted? Where are they going? It's, it's very impressive and it shows the work that they do with a rather large caseload. And in, in my case, and, and in three of our cases, the same can be said at the middle school level as they prepare for high school. And your comment about counselors meeting with individual students, I think this year, this, this time of year is just, it's unbelievable for counselors because <coughs> they're making sure that, that everybody's ready to take that next step and, and go on to college or to the military or to a career. And that requires meeting after meeting with individual students. And then we're just about to ask them to meet with every other individual student in the building to prepare their schedule for next year. So just the time components are, are incredible. You know, you know what's interesting too is this year for the first time ever, uh, the operations office has worked directly with the counselors in addition to working directly with the principals. And, and what's interesting is in the meetings I've had with counselors this year, my agenda looks very similar to the agenda I have with principals, which really tells you mm -hmm. that how intricately tied they are to exactly what you do. It's very easy for me to come up with an agenda for the counselors because I look back at what we talked about and they are that much in the mix with what you guys do every day. It's become a really multifaceted job, mm -hmm. I, I feel like, for us. And to do it well, you have to have quite a skill set. Well, I'll, I'll just say one more thing and then I'll stop. But uh, we, We've talked about a thousand things that they do and we haven't even gotten to the, to the job title. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they counsel Which, kids yes, who are having. My, I, I mean, the, the road to fifteen to from fifteen to twenty five is is rocky. For sure. If if your home situation is perfect, and our counselors um, deal with kids in crisis and t kids whose families are are going through difficult times and kids who are going through difficult times personally or having relationship issues or or one of the other thousand things that can happen to a kid uh, in high school and and that stops them in their tracks. 
in my building, it stops them in their tracks five times a day when the when the crisis of the moment arises, mm -hmm. and they're right there to, to help a kid work through. Yeah, yeah that's. I, uh, I've been in Delaware schools long enough now to say that I believe everybody's workload and accountability has increased in education. Be it a, a classroom teacher, an administrator, a counselor, other specialists, but probably more, no more so. That than school counselors. I mean, you know, while, while things have been added to their plate and added to their plate and added to their plate, Nothing's nothing coming. traditional has been taken away, right. you know. Uh, and, and so the job has really changed and the demands of the job has really changed. And so it takes a dynamic person who's willing to step in, be flexible, and be a team player as a quasi administrative, counseling, college. Uh, bus duty, lunch duty, testing you know, coordinator, testing coordinator 504 coordinator, yeah. uh, you know, it, we just add, 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 and, and I've always, you know, I've always been appreciative of that. Yeah, it seems like every new initiative that we tackle in our buildings goes through guidance, whether it's, you know, creating AVID, well, we got to select kids, so we go to guidance. Uh, we've got uh, a dual enrollment program that's going to target students for, you know, construction renovation or for nursing. Well, let's go to guidance to see right. who, what right. students meet that criteria. Right. And so, so there's not figure a, out the schedule, right? That's correct. And then they got to figure out the schedule afterwards. Right. So they're involved in the planning side and the cleanup side. And with all the social issues going on in our world and the way that the role of public education in society, and I think we all feel it in, in our business that uh, folks expect schools to be the fix and the cure-all. And it starts and stops with our school counselors. I mean, the, mm -hmm. whether it's home issues, uh, you know, self issues, wh whatever is going on in that child's life. I mean, the, the school counselors find it and then they, they they're, they're the quarterback. They're handing the ball off. They're tapping resources, outside resources. Uh, it's, it's amazing. So whether it's, it's vendors from the outside coming in to support our students or if it's us knocking on their door, they're partnering with so many different folks, all for the betterment of our, our families and our students. I think the other piece in at least three of our schools is that um, they have middle school programs as well. Huge. And that 11, 12, <laughs> and 13-year-old is a very different ball game than, than the high school component. For so sure. there's a lot of interactions between kids, conflict mediation, yes. you know, working with those situations. And our high school counselors have to be prepared for that too, because if somebody's busy, the other person picks up. You know, you don't say, well, that's not my job. That's just not how, how it works. You know, right. you're, you know, if you've got a kid in crisis or if you've got kids who need you, you do what you need to do. And there, I mean, my team is amazing that way. We've celebrated our strategic plan, certainly, over the last couple of years. We've had tremendous successes in the college and, and career uh, components using the metrics that, that we set up five years ago. And, and there's no group more you know, intricately involved with, with those statistics than the, than the guidance counselor group. You know, we talk a lot about getting kids in high rigor coursework. Uh, getting students involved with AP classes, IB, into dual enrollment programs. Well, they just don't get there unless, unless school counselors have those conversations and promote those courses, support students looking to stretch a little bit and to get into high level uh, coursework. So all those celebrations, you know, it, they don't happen without people behind the scenes, you know, keeping the ball rolling and, and, and getting kids the confidence and the support to, to get themselves involved with those types of courses. Uh, that is the truth. And, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got some students that don't find their way early in their high school career, and we're throwing layers of different options for credit recovery and how do you get back on track. And what has been amazing to me is uh, the complement of additional resources from the district level or state level, and then the way that the counselors can tie these students in. Our graduation rate has maintained and been solid or increased because we're catching students at the ninth grade level. Maybe they didn't pass ninth grade and get promoted, and we're catching them early and doing interventions, and it's making such a big impact. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody's journey is going to be different. That's what I'm always trying to let students know. It doesn't matter if your path is different than somebody else's path and whatever hurdles that you had as long as you get to the next level you're going to launch yourself and give you open the door of opportunities and our guidance team is tremendous with doing that for our students and the reality is they uh they're on call all the time mm -hmm. as well you know their their summer is almost non-existent because they're right. they're the last ones out uh you know they're finalizing grades they're doing promotion retention 
Uh, they're walking out, you know, close to July, and then they're working on the master schedule. They're coming back in August. They're doing conflict resolution. They're making sure the schedules are locked in, ready to go. And, you know, if they're lucky, they get a little bit of a break. And that's if students aren't emailing them throughout the summer, wanting to make changes to their schedules. They are 12-month employees. And, and they do it happily with a smile. Oftentimes, it's taken for granted uh, how available and how accessible they are. It's a great but um, they, they really are the backbone of the school community. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I was thinking something very similar in that I, I think every organization, whether it's a school or, or a company or, or whatever it is, uh, has that core group of people that are the, the workers. They're the ones that get things done. Um, and I, I think in, in schools, schools are no different. There are folks that are, that are you know, behind the car pushing, and there, there are folks that are kind of in the back seat riding along. And the counselors are always there. They're yeah. always the workers. They are always getting right. the job done. I think another piece is how instrumental they are in the development of the relationship between the teacher and the student. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there's a concern with a student, how they're doing academically or how they're doing personally, it's the guidance counselor who is that liaison between home, child, and <coughs> teacher. Um, and that's, that's huge, you know, because they have to have a really outstanding relationship that's with, with your teaching staff. Clearly, they have a, an expertise in dealing with students, right? But uh, what I've heard some things here about the strategic plan and increasing students in, in advanced courses and advocating for students, all of those things involve a unique expertise in dealing with coworkers and other adults. I mean, you, you're talking about situations where teachers have had a very difficult experience possibly with a student or their lives are changing because of what they're teaching or the expectations of who can get through AP readiness numbers and who can get into advanced courses and and so their ability to massage that and coach up adults as well as students is to be commended. The yeah. skill set's unbelievable. It really is. You know, the, de the level of detail is, is one thing because they have to be tremendously organized. I think, you know, great school counselor. But then at the same time, are you really master psychologists? Do you know how to work with people? People that are struggling, people that uh, are going through hard times in their life, people who are unsure about their goals in life, etc. At the same time, are you a great writer? Because by the way, you're going to write a lot of college uh, letters. At the same time, are you a great speaker? Because you might have to be in front of a group of parents trying to explain a new program that you have going on. It really is a, a an unbelievable uh, skill set to be a great school counselor in this day and age, much more so uh, than, than Stone Ages when, when we were in, in high school, that's Good, for sure. Without where, a doubt. Where they were drinking coffee and you went down <laughs> if you had a problem. And then, <laughs> old school counselors are mad at me right now. But Maybe. Yeah. I, I think <coughs> sometimes uh, teachers look at what counselors do and there's, there's some envy there because their, their schedule is a lot more open right. and they have a lot more self-determination in terms of how their day right. goes. Right. The day. And then you, you mm -hmm. get somebody who goes from the teacher ranks to the counselor ranks. And and they see the reality of the counselor job and they're like, holy mackerel, yeah. what did I get myself into? That's and then, true. you know, then they got to climb that hill and, and get their, their work mm -hmm. level up to where counselors, you know, have always worked. And 80% and of the information that goes through their office is confidential. I mean, they're, they're dealing with yeah. highly sensitive information. They're learning things about families. They, they hear uh, the raw feedback about their colleague in the math department because the, the family and the students got some mm -hmm. choice words about that teacher you know Sorry, so then they they gotta well I, I should probably let administration know about this concern but uh, you know they're, they they've walked that fine line it's really impressive uh, how how they manage that stuff and and yeah their their skill set continues to grow uh, one amazing example and it really is credit to my entire team uh, that happened just a couple weeks ago to see how they they just one example of how they go above and beyond. Uh, last year's valedictorian had a nice uh, financial aid package for Washington College. And part of that financial pa uh, package was a component of student loans. Well, due to some unfortunate situations, the student loan situation fell apart. She was told by Washington College she was going to have to not go back this spring. Our best <laughs> student. And uh, she's tremendous, she's, she's energetic, uh, and she's super smart and involved. And so she came back to her roots. She came back to us over Christmas break and met with our counseling team and what can we do and lean, leaned on Stand By Me, one of our outside groups to try to tie her up, made some calls to the college and 
she's got things settled and she's going back this spring and she's on track and you know that's just one of a thousand examples of how that, that's not even a student on a rolls anymore mm -hmm. and they're spending a lot and of time and energy all the time, all the time. happens all the time well I can tell you you know th they saved me as well <laughs> you know as uh as a, a 29 year old new principal not anymore you know it was 10 years ago <laughs> but uh you know th this, th that first year of uh you know my principalship at ai high school there, there was no more relied upon group than the guidance counselor so that same level of comfort they provide to that student all of our students uh, that, that was the same comfort they provided That's me great. as well because uh you know, they, they just have that depth of knowledge. They know the inner workings of right. the master schedule, the school, the community, and uh, they are tremendously valuable. Yeah, and we all know the value of a master schedule because we've all run buildings and we've all built those master schedules. For those of you who are not part of our, our field, uh, it's the backbone and spine of what we do. If you build a strong master schedule, you've maximized your resources, you've given opportunities for students that they may have not otherwise had. And so the work that goes into that is detailed and intricate. It couldn't be more essential for the functionality of a school. And, and they are the, the team that puts in all those extra hours as Kevin said in the summer and, and planning and then tweaking because once you build it then you got to fix it and then you've lost some students you added some students you got to go back in and massage that thing all the way through the end of September you're still working on that and uh, with without their effort we don't open the doors you know and, and I agree that that is that's one of the I think that gets undersold because it's not it's a, it's a detail that only people in leadership in the buildings understand and, and work on. I work with uh, a lot of people, at Con over 100 people at Conrad, and very few do I text on a summer day and say, <laughs> you know, what are you doing? You know, and they, you know, that's code for like, I need your help, you know, well, uh, you know, yeah. I'm sitting on the beach, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm in the office. And I've got like, a little problem with the schedule. Yeah, what do you need? You know, and I can think of one time like, all right, well, let me get some the flops on let me walk off the beach let me get some wi-fi here and i'll call you i'll call you uh the other situation i could think of is you know what are you doing like, i'm driving my daughter across the country like we're out in the you know we're out in the, the mountain time zone right now like all right I'll, let, me, let me just get let me figure out where i am i'll give you a call back in an hour or so you know and and you know you really there's a lot of trust there and a lot of dependence that you have on some pretty good people when you start to realize that uh what they're doing for you yeah I had a text message this morning <laughs> to a guidance counselor because I'm here and I needed them to kind of pinch it for me and something back at the building and you know it's not just during the summer it seems like it's you know <laughs> 365 days a year before we run out of time I just I, I want to take 15 seconds and say to uh, to John and Paul and Maddie and Suzanne thank you I, I couldn't do uh, couldn't do what I do uh, without you guys so thanks absolutely following up with that Amy Pauline, Amanda, Anna, even though you're not here, and Terry, uh, from all of us at McCain, we all thank you. You're tremendous. Thanks. Brenda, Debbie, and Matt, thank you for all you do. Kim, Dale, and Angela, you're amazing. Wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do what we do without you, so thanks. <laughs> so, uh, Laura, Taryn, Bill, and Clarence, thank you uh, on behalf of myself and the entire AI school community. Thank you for all you do. School operations can't run without people like these five and people like the guidance counselor. So I'm going to go ahead and thank all of you. Thank you all. Good day.